What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who ranking video. Today I'm going to be ranking all of the companions from the new series, the modern era of Doctor Who from 2005 all the way up until, um, well, technically 2019, but basically the end of series 11. Um, so there are a few rules for this uh, video. First of all, um, the characters that are allowed to be in this are only ones that have, one, travelled in the TARDIS at least once, and they have to have appeared in at least three different stories. Now, I was going to do just two different stories, but doing that would mean that I'd have a lot of characters in here that I just don't really feel like I need to put in. Characters like... Um, Oh, it's Vincent Van Gogh, uh, the two kids from Nightmare in Silver, um, you know, people like that, Adam Mitchell from Series 1, characters that I just don't feel like I really need to add to this list, so we've done three stories instead, which means that I've got the list down to 17 characters, I may have missed out a couple, but from what I can tell, 17 companions is what we've got here, but anyway, let's get started. Number 17. Jackie Tyler. Alright, so this one, she kind of only just fits on the list. I mean, she's barely even a companion, really. I believe she only, well, she, she travelled in the ties, I think, twice, from what I can remember, um, at least twice anyway. Um, but yeah, Jackie Tyler, she's basically, she's just Rose's mum, and that is the only purpose she serves. She doesn't really do that much. Um, she's right at the bottom because, one, she's barely even considered a companion in a lot of ways, and two, she does kind of, she's kind of just there as a domestic, she just uh, is there to drag Rose back to Earth all the time, um, which can be a little bit annoying, you know, having to come back to Earth all the time because mainly of Jackie. Um, she is also quite annoying, especially in at the start of Series 1. Um, she gets better as time goes on, but she's still not one of the standout characters. Number 16. Yasmin Khan. Now, this one may be a bit of a shock, but maybe not at the same time, because I don't actually not like Yasmin. Uh, or Yaz, as she's kind of more known as. Um, I think Yaz is a perfectly fine character. She's not annoying. She's not, you know, she's just she's just not a bad character. The problem is, though, she just doesn't really have any character. Um, she's massively, massively underused in Series 11. Hopefully in Series 12 we'll see her used a bit more, or at least just kicked out, I suppose. Uh, because in Series 11 she literally didn't even need to be there. The fact that we kind of got to know at the start that she was a policewoman didn't really ever come into effect again throughout Series 11, apart from maybe a little bit in resolution. Um, but apart from that, Yaz felt like a really, really really underutilized character she did not need to be there number 15 clara oswald now yes yes i know i've pretty much put probably the most um used i suppose um companion you know the one that was in the show the longest i suppose along with probably amy and rory um really really far down the list but i just don't really like clara i don't like what she's here for for instance Series 7, when she's when she starts, she doesn't really have the chemistry with Matt Smith, she doesn't really work, and the whole impossible girl thing, she feels less like a companion there, and more of a plot point. I think in Series 8, honestly, I don't mind the stuff with Danny, I don't really like Danny because he's very wooden and boring, but I think the whole thing with her and Danny isn't too bad. Once again though, it is kind of that domestic thing where it's kind of pulling her back to Earth. Um, however, the main issue is Series 8 and 9 especially, when she becomes too much like the Doctor, I don't like that. I think that her death in Face the Raven would have been perfect, and I would have really shot her up a lot higher because then I could understand why they were going for that you know she's too much like the doctor thing but then they totally got rid of that in Hellbent and that's really the main reason why she falls so low. Number 14 Ryan Sinclair Alright, so we have another one of the three Series 11 companions, and it's Ryan. Um, now, Ryan, I don't mind. I think he, I mean, he definitely does have a hell of a lot more to do in the series than um, Yaz does. However, I do think that some of his character traits I don't like. I don't like how, you know, especially in the Ghost Monument, I really don't like that scene where he goes out, he's like, it's like Call of Duty, man. He goes out shooting all the robots, and then he goes running off after, uh, you know, they all activate again. I think that's just a really stupid scene, and it just, uh, it just annoys me, to be honest, especially when he's, you know, so scared of all these ladders, and he has all these fears, but then he can just go out and run out yelling call of duty man and shooting robots i think that's totally stupid also i don't think tosin cole is the best actor in the world he's not terrible but i don't think he's the best actor um so because of that ryan just kind of sits at yeah he's he's all right number 13 river song another possibly quite controversial one now i really do like river song from science in the library all the way up until let's go hitler i think you know science in the library all of her stuff in series 5 and the start of series 6 she's very very good it's let's kill hitler 
onward that really ruins it for me. I hate how she is in Let's Go Hitler. I know that, you know, she's born to kill the Doctor and all that, and, you know, she's a bit of a maniac to start with, but then towards the end, she gets to understand what the Doctor is and what she's doing, and she comes around good again. But I just feel like she's so annoying and so childish in that episode, and it just kind of really loses interest with me with her character throughout the rest of her time. I think her last appearance in Husbands of River Song, she comes off as really stupid, not knowing that that's the Doctor. So yeah, River Song, she started off really well. I think she just had a big, big dip in the middle and towards the end. Number 12, Sarah Jane Smith. Now this is one you've got to hear me out on. I think Sarah Jane is absolutely amazing in the new series, and she's really amazing in the classic series, but I'm not counting her classic series appearances in this list, this is just for the new series. I'm also not counting her appearances in the Sarah Jane Adventures, this is purely to do with just her Doctor Who appearances. And like I said, she's very very good in all her Doctor Who appearances, she just doesn't have that much. I mean, she's in School Reunion, which I think she's very very good, a little bit naggy, but still very good. Um, I think she's very good when she comes back in Journey's End, The Stolen Earth, Stolen Earth Journey's End. And then her brief appearance in the end of time is also very good as well. Um, she only just qualifies for this list, which is another reason why she's a bit further down. But I think Sarah Jane is a really, really good character. Just, she is further down this list just because in the new series, she just doesn't do as much. Number 11. Nardole. Now, Nardole's another interesting one. He started off in The Husbands of River Song where I didn't really like him. I thought he was very annoying and not very funny. In Return of Doctor Mysterio, he was better, he was a bit more funny, but he just didn't really do much in Return of the Doctor Mysterio. But then when he came in Series 10, he wasn't in the series as a full-on companion, he just kind of popped up now and again. But when he did pop up, he was good, he was a lot more, he was a lot funnier, I think. And altogether, I think Nardole just, especially towards the end, I mean, his leaving scene, you know, when he leaves in The Doctor Falls, really emotional scene, I think he plays that really well, Matt Lucas. And altogether, Series 10 especially made me love Nardole. He's still not amazing, and I did think he started off quite rough, but Series 10, I do quite like him. Number 10, Rose Tyler. All right, so maybe another controversial pick, I don't know. Rose Tyler seems to be a very kind of up and down sort of character with people. Now, it may surprise you a little bit because if you guys know, I am a massive fan of the Russell D. Davis era, especially comparing it to the Stephen Moffat era and I suppose what we've had of the Chris Chibnall era so far. Um, and you know, I think series one or two are very good. She obviously also appears in series four um, at the end. Um, Rose Hall is a good character. I think though, my main issues are, one, um, in ser I think she's definitely the best in Series 1. She has the best chemistry in a way with Chris Eccleston. She has good chemistry with David Tennant, but it's a different sort of chemistry. I think the lovey-dovey stuff doesn't really work. It does annoy me a bit. Not as much as a lot of people, but it does annoy me a bit. And my main issue though, in Series 2 especially, she just comes off as a little bit bitchy and annoying. Um, and kind of a bit cocky as well. Um, so yeah, Rose Tyler, she's a good companion. I mean, she's the companion that really started it all off for me but she only gets the 10th place spot. Number nine, Bill Potts. Now I think the biggest thing with Bill is that she was a breath of fresh air, a really massive breath of fresh air after having Clara who was so all over the place and just, just really not very relatable. We get to Bill who's much more relatable, she's much more down to earth in a lot of ways. Um, and she's just a more interesting companion in that way. Um, the, my main issue with Bill is that, and I don't think I really noticed this on first watch of Series 10, um, but on rewatch again, I did notice that they were kind of plugging in the whole, you know, racism thing a little bit too much. I don't think they did it, they, did, they didn't do it overly a lot, but I think, you know, they did do it here and there. I think there was a moment in Empress of Mars that really kind of thought, mm, it's, you know, and the fact that she was a lesbian as well kind of, I felt like it did kind of push in there a bit too much, but as a character, Bill Potts was very, very good, um, and definitely, like I said, a massive breath of fresh air. Number eight, Mickey Smith. So like a lot of people, I imagine, from what I've heard, I started off not really liking Mickey in a lot of series one. I think um, his appearance in um, Aliens of London World War Three, when he, you know, was when he blew up the um, the House of uh, Parliament, whatever it was, um, he he was pretty good there. But he still wasn't amazing throughout the whole of Series 1. I think the main... When it, when Mickey became a great character for me was when he pretty much left in Rise of the Sidemen and the Age of Steel. I think that episode, and also kind of School Reunion, he was very good in that as well, but mainly the Sidemen two-parter, he really came into his own there. He was honestly probably the best thing for me about that two-parter. Um, 
And I just, from then onwards, I really loved Mickey. And even looking back on him, when he is a bit of an idiot, a bit of a, you know, wimp in earlier stories, I still can't help but absolutely love him. Number seven, Amy Pond. Here's another one which is probably a little bit controversial and a lot of people will say it is a bit too low down. Um, you've got to understand though, from this point onwards, and honestly from quite a long way onwards, um, long way back and onwards, I really love these companions. I think they're all very, very good. So Amy being in seventh place isn't saying she's a bad companion. She's just not quite up there for my personal opinion. Now Amy, I think, was such a good character. Um, series 5, she was just... I don't know, there was just this feel of her, I mean, the chemistry between her and Matt Smith, I think is just absolutely amazing. Um, she's just, Karen Gillan's a great actress, um, and altogether, I just, I really like her character. It does get a bit complex, you know, in Series 6 especially, with whole, the whole thing with River and that, and it does, she does get a bit complex as a character, and I do also agree that Amy can be a little bit irritating at times, but she's still a great character. Number 6, Rory Williams. Yeah, um, we've got the two, well, the two ponds, Rory Pond, whatever you want to call them. I'm still calling them Rory Williams. Um, but um, yeah, we've got these two very close to each other. I did put Rory just one ahead though, and that's once again, it's probably quite controversial. But I don't know what it is about Rory. Rory was a similar thing with Mickey, um, where you know at the start he wasn't the most liked, but he became really good towards the end. However, at the same time, I even at the start I didn't really not like Rory. Um, I thought he was a bit of a goofball, he was a bit weird, but I liked him. I think that he died a few too many times, I will say that. I think that was a bit ridiculous how many times he died. Um, but just, I think Arthur Darville just put on a really good performance. He's funny, he's just, he's witty, he really stands up to the Doctor sometimes. I mean, that moment in The Girl Who Waited is just phenomenal. Um, and yeah, Rory, I mean, it's hard to split those two up, but I just like him a tinsy bit more. Number five. Graham O'Brien, so the third and final Series 11 companion gets a hell of a lot higher up than the other two. Graham is probably the saving grace of Series 11 for me. I think, I uh, know, you know what, I'm going to say this. In Series 11, I prefer Graham over the Doctor. I'm going to say it, I do. I think Graham is honestly the best thing about Series 11. If Graham wasn't in Series 11, I really think it would very much go downhill. I mean, I haven't actually ranked series 1 to 11 yet, but um, I'll say that series 11 probably isn't my least favourite. It's close, but it probably isn't. Without Graham, though, I think it would be. Um, Graham's just such a good character. Bradley Walsh is an amazing actor. I wasn't really expecting it. I was thinking when I first heard that Bradley Walsh was going to be in Doctor Who as a companion, I thought this just doesn't feel right. It just feels weird. But no, Graham... Bradley Walsh absolutely smashed Graham out of the park, um, and I just think his character was the most interesting, the funniest, and just the best in all of Series 11. Number 4, Martha Jones. Here's a companion that is probably actually a little bit higher on my list than some other people's list. I really do like Martha. Um, now, I do agree that yes, she is kind of a bit of a rebound Rose. Um, you know, it's kind of the whole thing where she fancies the Doctor like Rose did. However, you know, the Doctor's so... the Doctor let's be honest, he did like Rose, um, as much as we don't really want to admit it, some of us fans, but he kind of did, um, and he just keeps talking about her all the time, and Martha's just like, she just gets sick of it. I do really like how she exits the show, though, I love, well, exits the series, anyway, series three, how she just says, you know, um, it's like, it's like, um, you know, have you ever had that feeling when somebody likes you, but you don't like them back, or whatever, you know, I just really like how that all goes, but Martha, yes, she was underused. Um, she really was treated badly by the Doctor in a lot of ways. But as a character, I do quite like her. Number three, Captain Jack Harkness. All right, so like I said with Sarah Jane Smith, uh, where I didn't count the Sarah Jane adventures, with, Ca with Captain Jack, I'm not counting any of Torchwood. Um, Captain Jack is very different in Torchwood than he is in Doctor Who. I do think he's better in Doctor Who, actually. Um, he's just so fun, such a fun character. With, in Series 1 with Christopher Eccleston, I think in a lot of ways he does actually work better with Christopher Eccleston than he does with David Tennant, um, but he still shines with David Tennant as well. I mean, in the three-part Series 3 finale, he's really, really good. I'd love seeing him back again. When he returns in the Stolen Earth Journey's End for Series 4, he's really good. Um, there's really nothing I can fault with Captain Jack. I just think he's a really funny, interesting, pretty quirky character. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's not, there's nothing I can really say that's bad about Captain Jack. I just think he's really cool. Number two, Wilfred Mott. 
Now it takes a special companion um, to get this high up, especially when you consider that Wilfred Mott was not really in the show very much. I mean, he briefly appeared in Voyage of the Damned, um, then, you know, we saw him there, here and there in Series 4, kind of in, you know, the Sontaran two-parter and stuff. But then it was the end of time, where he was actually the companion with the Doctor, that Wilfred Mott was amazing, Bernard Cribbins played the part absolutely brilliantly, and I honestly think that's the main reason why this gets so high. Bernard Cribbins played this part so well, the emotion especially, that he put through the role, along with David Tennant's emotion as well in that story, was just amazing, and I just think... Having, you know, this is another one of those domestic characters, but it's a domestic character that works so much better than any of the others. Um, and the fact that he travels with the Doctor without Donna, um, I mean, ugh, what else can I say? Wilfred Mott is amazing. Number one, Donna Noble. Yep, um, the Noble family is quite a high point for me, as it is with a lot of people I uh, understand, but Donna Noble is just, oh, she's such a good character. In The Runaway Bride, she's pretty annoying, pretty irritating, but you can kind of understand it. She wasn't actually supposed to ever come back after that point. But after Martha left, they thought, we need another companion, why don't we get Catherine Tate back? So they did. And Catherine Tate is purely a comedic actress, which is what she played a lot in The Runaway Bride. But when she came back in Series 4, she had those comedy moments. I mean, she really did. She had some really funny moments. But she also had some of the deepest and saddest, most emotional moments in all of Doc 2, and she played those perfectly. And then don't even get me started on the chemistry between her and David Tennant, best chemistry ever. There wasn't a love thing going on there like there was with Rose and, Don, uh, Rose and Martha. So yeah, Donna Noble has always been my favorite companion, and she probably always will be. All right, so there we have it. That is my ranking of all the new series, all the main new series companions, um, all 17 that I've put in this list. What are your thoughts? What are your, I mean, you don't have to rank all 17, but I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But, um, you know, what are your top five, top 10 companions of the new series? I'd love to know down in the comments below. Always remember that this was my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion as well. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Go and uh, check out my Twitter. I have a Twitter um, profile. Go check that out. Link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.